So before we start, uh, what I would like to do to um, uh, to start as you know more unified and you know after each speaking engagement the energy shifts after each break. So I would like to I'm just going to play something very simple like a pad maybe for about a minute and what I'm going to ask you is to if you can. Uh, try to hold your hands as much as you can, uh, all of you, you know, by, so if you can get more, you know, I know that there is some empty seats, but if you can as, uh, try as much as you can to uh, hold your hands, take deep breaths, at least three deep breaths while I'm going to do those pads, so it brings the energy back into this room, because uh, right now, as I can see, the energy is pretty all over the place, so I want to try to make us back into ourselves, okay? Are you, are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay, so as, as much as you can, and if you cannot touch the hand of the, the other person, it's okay, don't try to stretch. <laughs> it's, you know, just visualize that you all uh, are holding hands and you're all one, you know, because we're all one anyway. So, thank you. So you can take, uh, when I'm going to do this, you can take, you can close your eyes or not uh, and take three deep breaths and please put aside anything, anything in your mind so we can start fresh.
So I'm going to try to fit everything I have to tell you in an hour, which is going to be difficult, but um, that's why I brought my cell phone with me to keep in track <laughs> of the time. Um, so I had a two near-death experience and I was once temporarily paralyzed. So I have a lot of things to tell you. I'm not sure I'm going to extend in details my stories because these can be read in books and things and uh, I'm going to talk about it of course a little bit but not too much in detail because my uh, motivation here is to uh, uh, try as much as possible to give you tips and to help you especially if you work with other people uh, such as hospice and hospitals to try to help you um, helping others because that's all we are we're all connected so we all help one another um, so my stories is only will be only for you to identify with your own stories or the stories that you know of people close to you so you can help them uh, as well so my first near death experience was when I was 12 and it was a car accident um, I was um, and I was in the coma first. And this I want to take some time to talk about the coma because uh, I have helped so many people. Um, in my experience being in the coma, I was, I could, everything had a sound. Every thought had a sound. So when I remember being in the scene, um, not a pretty scene, of course. Um, I could hear if somebody was talking to me close to my ear, it would be almost unbearable. So when my dad would come because he was driving, and of course he felt so guilty, his guilt so he's feeling his, em his emotions from here, so his negative emotions about his guilt and uh, to have maybe killed his son because that was the w that's what they said at the time when I was laying. That's what I heard. Me, I was in already, maybe not in heaven yet, <laughs> but I was such in such a place that I was, it was such a beautiful place. Very welcoming even though I was still in a coma. It was not the NDE yet, because uh, the NDE happened later on when I was in the ambulance. And <laughs> those are two steps that I, I pretty much can identify uh, that later on that made sense. And when I was in the coma, and that's what I would really want to tell you, if I have to detail a topic, it will be this, because I think that's the most important. Uh, in, from my experience, being in the coma, I could hear everything. So my dad, with his guilt, talking to me, crying to my ears, was so unbearable that he, in fact, was pushing me towards the light. Every thought of somebody, a whisper of somebody far away from the scene, I could hear it. So even a thought that somebody was feeling, I, it was transcripted to my ears as sound. We all know everything is vibration, right? So this was a perfect example for me to bring me to my work, which is work with sound. Once uh, somebody called me and said, she was so depressed because uh, she said, um, I forgot if it was her son or her nephew, I thought it was her nephew, who had a very bad accident, a motorcycle accident. And he was in the coma for a long, long time. And she came across to read my book and she said, you know, maybe you can help me figure out which, if I had to have a CD, because she had my CDs, so she said, if I have to, what CD should I play to my nephew, or could your CD help? And I just tuned in, and the first thing that came for that, for that 
person was one particular city called Reflection. I said, you need to bring a boombox and put that CD there. Because I could see it. It was like I could see, I could visualize it. So I, I just tell her, I explain her, uh, bring that CD in that room, but please put it very, very, very low volume. So low that you will not be able to hear it. But he will be able to hear it. Remember, every thought, every whisper will be sound. Maybe sound to his ear. So uh, that's what she did. And she, she said, I almost couldn't hear it, but we left it. We left the music. And, um, and when she called me uh, three days later, completely moved, she said, you know what? After playing this CD, he woke up. And uh, the thing is, what I was saying, I say, the, if my dad, when I came to the ambulance, and before I really start the ND, uh, I mentally communicated to the nurse in the ambulance. And I was even shocked that the nurse could and could understand what I was saying because, of course, I couldn't speak. I could hear everything. I couldn't speak in the coma state. And once I was in the ambulance, my dad tried to get into the ambulance close to me, and I just didn't want him. Because I knew if he was close to me, I would just, I didn't want him. He, it was hurting so bad when he was, his guilt and his crying was hurting me so bad. Not f me but I was in pain for him because I couldn't understand why they had so much pain for me. Me, I was in the light. I was fine. I was bathing in a beautiful ray of light and it was so warm, welcoming, loving, and conditional. I've, I had never experienced that um, since I came back on Earth. <laughs> since my day one here, of this lifetime. I had forgotten how beautiful it felt. And um, so when I talked to the ambulance, to the nurse, and I said, you know, kick my dad out, out of here. And he got it. He said, sir, you need to get out. And uh, my dad tried to, as much as possible to stay. And, and he said, you know, you get out. And, and um, and finally gets out, and then he comes to me and says, you're OK. And then at that time, he said, you're OK. The ND started. I was, suddenly I felt in the tunnel. I was um, floating in the tunnel. My legs, my feet forward, at fast paced. And at that first near-death experience, I met the angels, uh, beautiful, giant, very, very tall angels. Um, I met beings of light. Uh, I don't know if we'll have time to talk about the beings of light because then that will be, we will be completely out of topic. Um, <laughs> uh, it would take me three hours then. Uh, but um, that was the first near-death experience. What came out of it uh, was music, of course, was sounds. A year later, I, start, I watch a um, French singer uh, on TV, and something pushed me, like spirit, something pushed me to my piano. And uh, I started to play her name. Her name was Dalida, for those who may know. And, uh, you know, every, every actress, every actor, every singer, on TV, anybody on TV always show pretty nice, happy. Uh, they put their happy face. Um, so, of course, so does Dalida was putting her happy face when she was singing. Something pushed me to play her name on, on my piano. So I figured out very fast how to play her name on my piano. I started, I started, I started, and then I keep playing her name uh, over and over and over and over 
until suddenly, I don't know what happened. Well, I know now what happened, but it's like suddenly the, uh, a window, the window of her soul opened up in the galaxy. It's like you see the sky, dark sky with stars, and suddenly the window opens and you see through. And I could see through Dalida, and it scared the hell out of me. Because I was, uh, you know, my near death was 12, and that was when I was 13. It scared the hell out of me because I thought I was at already at that age. I even didn't know probably what it meant, but I thought I was violating her privacy. I suddenly felt guilty. You know how her human beings are taught to feel guilty of everything? <laughs> so here I was feeling guilty of what I could see. And I could see her like saying, help, help, help. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know. I couldn't talk to anybody about it because people would think I'm completely nuts. So I said nothing. And I was all by myself. Um, and you have to know, too, that I grew up in, on a, in a very small village in northern France uh, on a farm. So it was not the most open-minded people in surrounding me that I could talk about angels and things like that. So I was really on my own, and that was for my is good though. It has everything happens for a reason. Everything, everything, everything um, that you perceive at this moment as negative or not, it's for highest good for your understanding. And we all role play with each other, no matter what. So whether you get angry or you get um, you get a negative, what you perceive as negative experience, it has to happen for you to understand something very specific. Does that make any sense? Yeah. So, um, when I started to play her name, I could really perceive her, her distress. Uh, little did I know that, because of course I couldn't do anything, and a few years later, she committed suicide. And everybody, of course, was so surprised because who could, who could have told that this beautiful lady radiating light, because she was radiating a lot of light, but she was in such misery because she didn't have her place. And how many, how many people who are angel-like in this earth who came to do the good do think or fear they don't fit in this place in, in, at this time. So those who cannot find a way out, they just co-create the way out, like she did. What I learned too is the, um, the innocence of knowing. I always had a... Um, sense of knowing. Like I remember when Princess Diana was killed, uh, even though I was a little kid, I, I, it made no, it was obvious to me that she was killed. Uh, even though in my family they thought again that I, it, I, I was so negative. So many times my family would perceive me as negative because I was telling the truth, <laughs> of my truth the truth I could perceive from, a diff from being able to go to a different plane, different dimension. So, of course, you know, to me it made totally sense because if she had lived, uh, if she had married this uh, rich guy, um, um, Dodi al I think is, her name was, is, well, and, um, and if she had, if it's true that she she was carrying uh, his child, then it would have been peace on earth. Because a British princess marrying a rich Arab would have created, would have done it. It could have resolved all those issues. Of course, that couldn't happen, so they had to be stopped. Because peace don't bring any money. Even that's very, maybe corny, 
but you know, basically that's what it is. Um, so they had to be stopped. Um, another thing that I have um, felt that's communication, communication with the departed souls. Um, you know, when, when a loved one leaves, I had so many experience with friends who were so sad that their parents died. I had this particular friend, his dad and his mom left months apart, you know, like when a couple is very united, usually they, they, if one goes first, the other one follows quite soon after. That's what happened, so he felt totally in misery. And then he was freaked out because he could hear strange sounds in his house. So I said, you know, let's, let's do a session and let's communicate with your loved ones and uh, with your parents, and which I never met before. And we started to do that. And then just to tell you an idea how that can happen uh, when a loved one try to come back to give you a sign uh, of acknowledgement that it is not the end when you're on the other side. He, he was hearing um, uh, somebody knocking his window many times, and he was so scared about it. He thought it was haunted or something. What he, he had no idea it was, it was his parents doing that, or it could be his parents doing that, because he had no idea. So when I, told, when I came in, into the communication, and I, I completely saw his mother, and suddenly, his, her, his mother showed herself as being scared while she was suing close to the window by somebody knocking the window. And everybody, every time she would just jump, say, oh, and I say, do, do, does that make any sense to you? And he said, oh, yeah, that was me. I used to do that all the time. I say, that, here you go. So she comes back, and she does that to you now. That's her way to tell you, so you have a clear sign that it is her, because that's a very precise detail, precise detail. People can come back with um, anything that was very particular to them. Any behavior, any odor, any body odor, any smell, any fragrance they used to wear, if there were any. Uh, anything very specific about that person, they will come back. And it takes them, it's very difficult for them to come back to this dimension. You know that it takes, they need to lower the vibration like crazy, like what we did to come back here, to be able to be in that womb and become who we are today. It took us as a soul to be, to lower our vibration a lot. Do you understand that? Do you? Because the, 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 when I'm, I, I work with people most of the time, for, especially for healing purposes, people with physical challenge, this is my, what, my most motivation, I'd say, because I see so many people struggling. And the, by the way, the second part, I will, I will bring some of you on stage with me. Uh, but the, you know, I will tell you what we'll do for the second part will be more mostly musical and experience uh, right here. Um, so some of you who have any physical challenge, who do not mind to be in, in the spotlight, uh, to come here. Uh, and if you don't, then that's fine. You can stay where you are. But it's always better when you if you acknowledge a healing, and I, and I think I want to go through that now, uh, uh, the healing aspect. Um, I hear a lot, we hear a lot, uh, people say, I'm going to fight for it. Uh, and that's a word I really want to talk about it because every thought, every word 
manifest into physical form later on, or instantaneously sometimes. And you hear a lot of people say, I'll fight, especially the politicians love to, to use that, I'll fight for you, and that scares the hell out of me. Because that's, I don't see how we can create peace with a fight. But I'm not going to extend on the political side, I'm going to extend on the healing side, the physical side. I see people coming to me saying, you know, after they've done everything they could, if they had cancer, if they had any type of illness, this, this is uh, unbalance, whatever it is, within the body, whatever, whatever the manifestation of their co-creation is uh, within the body. And people always want to fight. I hear very often people, I work a lot with cancer centers, and people will say, I'm, I'm going to fight for it, that's it, I'm going to get rid of it, and, and that's it, as if it's not here. Hello, if it's in your body, it's in your body. It's in your body, people. If it's in your body, you cannot deny it, say, I'm going to get rid of it, I'm going to fight with it. It's in your body. Do you want to create war within your body? In a war, there's always a winner and usually a loser. If you create a war within your body, there'll be a winner and there'll be a loser, but you don't know which one it is. Do you want to gamble? I'm always stunned when I hear that. And it's because we're so used to hear that word that we don't understand the impact. We're all connected. Everything is connected. So everything you say, everything you think, you co-create it in your body. And if, if something happened in your life, the, those near-death experiences, the first one where I met the angels, when I was temporarily paralyzed because I was not following my path, but I'm not, I cannot get into details again because it's, it would take too long. But I was not following my path. I was getting away from my path for different reasons. And I wouldn't listen. And the way that the universe found to stop me from running from my path was to stop me from running. And when I was paralyzed temporarily, that very second, it made sense to me. And I right away forgave myself for, and I said, I'm sorry for not knowing better, for, for not doing better for so many years. Because I think it was about four years I was kind of getting completely away. Uh, and so it made sense, and I felt my, in my solar plexus something like what I call the breath of life was released, and I didn't know what it, what it was. But then after a few days, I started to feel, you know, my toes kind of being, you know, numb, so it was a good sign. And then it took me like eight months to walk completely normal again, but um, that was temporary. And the other near-death experience I had, it was... I met uh, with um, what we know as Jesus. And at that time, I was not very close to religion. I've never been really close to religion anyway, um, because I, like, I don't like limitations in general. <laughs> so I think religion limits always something, um, or judge something, and I'm not really f too comfortable with it. So uh, at that time, I was not too close to Jesus. So when he came to my... Um, hospital room and show me something I needed to see in order to understand what I was doing in this lifetime. It made like, oh boy, it, what a teacher he had been at that moment for me as a valid, to validate what I came here to do. Um, because, you know, when you come here to do something, it's not easy every day, right? So sometimes you need some type of validations because sometimes you may doubt, you know, like people say, even Mother Teresa used to doubt so many times, uh, saying that she ha was making no difference in the world and how we know how sh she made the difference, but 
she all, everybody has their doubts. It's, it's, uh, uh, that's the way it is as being human beings here. <laughs> um, yeah, so I want to keep... Uh, talking a little bit about healing because I think I'm, 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 I want to prepare for the second part. Um, what you have to understand is communications with... I hear a lot of people say, I'm alone, I'm lonely, uh, but that's a choice because you cannot be alone. Uh, look at the... Look at the, look at the window, look at the birds, look at the plants, look at the trees, they all talk. If you want to communicate with them, they will all talk, they all have something to give you. It's an offering. You give them, it's a knowledge, the gift is to acknowledge each other. Don't you like to be acknowledged? Well, it's acknowledgement of being, I'm here. Even if it looks like, um, uh, like I hear a lot of people say, I'm vegetarian because I don't like to kill animals. I cannot agree, but you have to take life of a plant to a vegetable, of a living being, a living being for, to feed you with vegetable. It's the same. It's a living being too. You, you see that when um, I live in Palm Springs where there is so many uh, gated communities and golf courses and uh, gardeners all over the place that treat plants like, I cannot say the word, <laughs> They cut beautiful plants with a big thing without understanding how it hurts to those beings. I fear them. And when I see that, it hurts me. When I see those bougainvilliers, when they cut them like this and the bougainvillier takes like four months to come back to life, it hurts me. It doesn't take much more to cut with a scissors, you know, or with a knife, and to ask the plant is, I'm going to cut so you can breathe better. But communicate. Don't cut a tree uh, because it, you need to build a structure without even talking to that tree. It's a living being. It's a crime. So once you start to really believe and live every day, every second, as one. Because it's one thing to say we're all connected. And it's one thing to be and to live as all connected. And connected is not just you and I, two people. It's everything around you. Because I had a beautiful experience. A hum, I, I saw on my window a hummingbird nest. And I had a put video on my website of, uh, about it. And it's just to tell you how nature plants things so well. The hummingbird, the baby hummingbird, was there. And then um, suddenly it was so windy that almost the mother hummingbird was like so, you know, she had her hair completely up because she was so scared. So I came outside. And I talked to her before I came outside because I, I heard stories that hummingbirds can leave their nest if they get scared. So I said, you know, if I don't do anything, the eggs will just fall. So I have to do my part. And there is a reason why she had to choose the rose just in front of my window. So I had to do something. So I came and took a rope. and. She looked at me. She didn't move a thing. The baby finally was born. And at that time, it was so hot. I don't know if some of you have been to Palm Springs, but it's like Phoenix. It's getting really hot soon in the spring. And that was just this spring. And as soon as the sun was so hot for that little baby, a rose was born just above the hummingbird like an umbrella. And as soon as the hummingbird was big enough, the rose started to, had no purpose. 
And that was, I, to, I filmed that so you could, if you go to the, my website, you could see um, this video. Um, and it was like, those moments make my day, make my life. So don't tell me you're alone because things like that happen all the time. But do you pay attention? So I want to go back uh, about the fight. My experience with everybody I've, ta I've worked with um, when I give meditations and stuff for healing purposes, it, it, I always, so those I, I, I want to invite on stage later on, like in a few minutes, would be you have to agree to be in the spotlight, meaning to tell everybody what's, what's your name and what you need. What do you need? You, have, you see, when you have an unbalance in, in your body and you want something, you want to be healed, you want to release that and you don't know how, first you start by acknowledging it, not fighting. You're not going to fight with that entity. It's an entity within you. You don't want to fight with it. Again, you want to be friend with it. It's in your body. You have to be gentle. You have to be gentle with what you eat, with what you put in your body, with what fluids you put in your body. You want to be gentle with thoughts you put in your body. So if an entity has been invited within you because it's a co-creation, so once you start to accept it's a co-creation, you cannot see it as an enemy to fight. So you will see it as an entity um, to... Um, when I see Scott here, this guy starts scaring me because that means he's going to show me soon the, the board saying you don't have much time left. <laughs> so um, it's just... Uh, so first thing is to really talk to what is in your body or in your mind if it's an emotional thing, uh, whatever it is, whatever unbalanced it is, to talk with it as if it's a friend, because it's a friend, and it has to be a friend. Uh, you have to, it's like th there's almost no options if you want it to release or have a chance to release gently. Because the thing is, when you have something, what I've seen with all the people I've worked with, it's an, you get like I had a temporary, temporary, <laughs> uh, I was temporarily paralyzed. When you have something within you, whether it's even it's cancer, whatever that is, it's temporary. It's just, it's just there as a blessing, maybe, maybe sometime too much for the person to hear, but it's an opportunity for you to overcome something that you need to overcome, whatever that is, if it's fear, whatever that is. It's there to give you an opportunity to become, to enlighten, to empower. It's not there to kill you. It's there to help you to grow spiritually. That's my understanding of it. Because again, I believe after all those experiences, when I see things or when I hear things, I, I always focalize on the energy that I see radiating from that thought. So if somebody, I would like to do an experience now for all of us. By the way, before that, I want to mention about my workshop this afternoon. Uh, the workshop was not totally corrected announced. So th at 3.30 to 5.30, I'll be in the Prescott room, and the workshop I will be doing will be Music of the Soul Personalized, which means that everybody in the room will have an opportunity uh, to have their music of the soul, I mean, some of you, of course, because uh, I think we, I can take in two hours, maybe four, per, four person. And everybody, it will be a very interactive, entertaining, fun um, 
uh, empowering um, moment when all of you can share what you see. Because every time I work, I always work with angels. Angels always work with me when I do my music sessions. So every time I work, I have a clear, um, uh, everything is transparent. So we don't hide anything. Everything is clear for you to see as long as you do not violate the privacy we, are here, we have here. But you always, some people can see things and you know, so you're all invited to see, even maybe uh, right now when we're gonna have uh, some people come. So if some, some of you who needs help and wants to be acknowledged and are not shy to say, I need help right now and I'm ready for it, then please come forward. I need three to four people. And since we will not have time, I believe, because we only have 10 minutes left, I was told, uh, since we will not have time to share, because after I do that, uh, we normally what we do is we share the messages. So I'm, um, um, thanks, uh, Debbie, James, uh, allowed me to have the Prescott room one hour prior to the, the workshop. So if some of you wants to talk about it, or about what you saw today and everything, uh, the Prescott room will be open from 2.30 to 3.30 before my workshop, so we, so we can talk about all this, okay? So what I'm going to ask you to do, your, your, your work, is, the music is not just for them, it's, it's for them, but it's also for you, of course. What, what I want, the state of mind I want you to be is, some of you who wants to watch what's going on, you can watch if that's your interest, uh, to see what's going on energetically. If you see auras and angels and stuff, uh, you're free to do so. Like I say, everything I do is clear and transparent. Um, but most of the time, also, it has to be for you an, a moment uh, where you can... Um, um, I want it to be a moment when you can, I want it to be a moment now, right now, I want right now, I invite you, I invite you right now to, to feel a moment of your life that you haven't healed yet and you know it, you know what it is. And please do not put the head in the sand because that's not helping. Just dare to look in the mirror and see what is in your life something that you haven't heard from. It, it doesn't have to be physical, okay? Uh, and I want you to feel that pain, because that's very important. You cannot do things superficially. You have to feel the pain big time, like almost like a an instant regression when you feel that moment right now in order for it to be released. And you have to have to be, to put your mindset and your heart into a place where you allow your higher self to release, to, to, to be thankful for whatever that is that brought you that in comfort for so long, or for not that long, or for whatever the time it was, and to say the same thing like when I said, I'm sorry for not knowing better. I want you to say that about that thing about that, whatever that is, and say, don't be shy, be ready to say, I, uh, I'm sorry for not knowing better, and now it's time, I'm ready, and uh, from that moment on, I will always listen, and always, you know, you will always, it's, everything is an opportunity for you to become, uh, to glow. So I want you to ask, your name, well, I have your name, so Dan, what is, uh, what is it that you need? Uh, well, at first I thought it was going to be like a physical thing. Yes. And then when you just said to, like, 
accept the pain, you know, when you go through something. So it's really, it's um, to let. Okay. Really, for me, it's to let myself accept love. Okay. Do you all heard that? Dan wants to accept love. And what, Peter, what do you need? I just may just uh, forgiveness or maybe the like, same thing. It's probably just love, acceptance. Annie? I have arthritis in my hips and need that healed and ditto with this, these guys. And I'm Elaine and I have to repeat the same thing. It's forgiveness, letting go of the past and self-love. Okay, so what I'm going to do very fast uh, will be to, do, do I have your permission to put my hands on your shoulder? Okay, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tune in in each of you and then I'm going to tell you a thought that the higher realm will communicate to me. And it will probably be something completely stupid. Uh, like uh, I had experience where I would say to somebody, uh, to be able to get rid of, um, not to get rid, but to release whatever you have, you need to put your right foot in uh, ice water or whatever. And she would say, you, I paid that money for the session for you to tell me that. You completely nuts. I said, well, that's, I'm sorry, that's what I got. And I'm very, I, I, I only can tell you, repeat and repeat and repeat this to you. She left the session thinking I was she had wasted her money until six months later. It took her six months to do it. Uh, she said, I was such in pain one day, I just said, what the heck? I'm just going to do it. And she was healed. So usually it's something that makes no sense. And the reason is because your brain cannot. No, don't tell me it's five minutes. I can't. <laughs> and because your brain cannot uh, understand it because you know you need to feel it. As soon as it gets up here, it destroys everything. Like expect a miracle, it's a perfect thing you can put in your brain so you have no miracle. Because you expect it. And if you expect it, you block that blessing to reach out to you. Because you will focalize on what specific, I expect it, I don't want it to be this way. And maybe it will be from that way and you'll miss it. And that's, that's why they always choose something that makes no sense. This way we cannot use that.
You especially do not want to clap because when you clap it brings the vibration lower again. So once we raise the vibration, I want you to keep with that vibration and as you leave the room, or, you know, as you, we move forward, I want you to keep that vibration as long as you can in your heart and in your soul. 
and if whatever you have it all comes with a belief you know belief that even if that musical moment was extremely short it's not because it was short it may not have had a huge impact on you so with it I love you namaste to you and keep spreading the light and the unconditional love to yourself and around you and around to all the living beings on this planet. And thank you for all of you for coming. I wish you well. <laughs>